Earlier in the week I spoke about some verses which had been quite important to me uh, and I just started off on a hospital bed. Uh, when you pass through the waters I will be with you. That was from Isaiah 43. So I just wanted to look at how does that work. Well, something that's helped me quite a lot is uh, an incident which happened in David's life in 1 Samuel chapter 30 where the Amalekites, uh, the baddies, been along and kidnapped the wives and children of David and his men. Uh, and when they got back they found they're all gone uh, and then on top of that David's men who were obviously got annoyed started talking of stoning David they were just so cross with him uh, so what did David do well it just says he strengthened himself in God uh, and notice just how personal that is he strengthened himself in his God uh, that's falling back on on some kind of long-standing relationship that David had with God and I just wondered, so how did he do that? Well, earlier on um, in 1 Samuel 23, there's a similar sort of incident where David's been chased by Saul this time, who's after his life. And he's met by Saul's son, Jonathan, who is his best friend. And it says Jonathan strengthened his hand in God, strengthened David's hand in God. And what he did was to remind David of the promises that God had made to him about becoming king. And I think that is the key. There's a verse in 2 Peter uh, at the beginning which says this, uh, His, that is God's divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence and by which he's granted to us his precious and very great promises that through these we may escape the corruption which is in the world because of sinful desire. And it seems it's about knowing God and going back to his promises. And the promises, according to Peter there, help us to grow in godliness and put aside sinful desires. Those things might be things that come at us from other people, but also they can be from within. Uh, so we might want to be angry or get envious and, and so on. Uh, the word of God is the place to go. And for David, uh, he had his faithful friend in Jonathan who helped him in his walk with God. So what are God's promises? Uh, I once was asked that. I went to a youth group uh, back in Wrexham in the day uh, and the activity of the night's look at God's promises uh, and the last question was to list them. I said, goodness me, because there's a load uh, which... which we don't have time to go into, but things like peace and guidance and strength and truth, meeting our needs. He promises his spirit, eternal life, abundant life, uh, answered prayer, forgiveness of sins, his presence, that, that the list could go on. I think the other thing to go back to is the gospel. Uh, the gospel itself, uh, John 3.16 is that a very well-known verse. John 5.24, Jesus says this very simply, truly, truly. I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. And there's loads of other verses uh, that, that sort of briefly, I suppose, summarise what the gospel is. So the key thing is uh, what promises are significant to you. Uh, some perhaps are more than others. Just go for the ones that mean something that you can go back and rest on and find the ones that help you. And then just three things. Uh, learn how to strengthen yourself in God, find others, find that faithful friend who's able to encourage you in your walk with God, but conversely look out for others that you too uh, can help and encourage. So 1 Peter, uh, close with this, he just says this, Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. If we were to paraphrase that in today's language, it might be something like this, fasten your seatbelts and press on.